Hey guys, I got something really awesome for you today. This is one of those advancements in the AI art world that is really awesome and really cool, but seems to have gone relatively unnoticed. It's swept under the radar. I don't see anyone else really talking about this, but it is super awesome. Today we're going to be talking about a project called Photomaker, customizing realistic human photos via stacked ID embedding. Yep, a bunch of technical jargon I know, but the outputs don't lie. You can upload any reference image you want, and your stable diffusion outputs will be customized by that reference image. And no, this isn't just image to image. Think of this more like a fully customized model instantly around whatever image you uploaded. So in theory, we could have consistent characters create your very own art style, or of course the classic put yourself in any situation imaginable. Yes, before all of this was possible, but you had to spend time actually training an entire model around those images, which would take a lot of time. And previously, if you're not technically inclined and you don't have a powerful computer, well, it would have cost you money on a website to create something like this. But these problems are entirely solved by Photomaker. All right, so yeah, this is the first example. We have a photo of this guy, and then in 10 seconds, we get an output Instagram photo of that same exact guy. This is entirely AI generated by Stable Diffusion. This was the reference image. Put this guy in any scenario you want. We have this nice black and white photo, him as Iron Man. Looks like he's at some temple of some kind. Looks like he's in Game of Thrones. Now he's wearing a full suit of gold armor and a sword. You can even put this this guy in famous works of art, all with a really high fidelity and quality. And you see this works for pretty much anybody. Turn her into Spider Woman, put her in Game of Thrones, all the same exact examples. The possibilities are truly endless, and you can see how this could work really well for custom characters. If you make your own custom character, let's say with Dolly 3 or Mid Journey, you could absolutely input it into this model and have that character in a bunch of different scenarios. Pretty freaking amazing. So like I said, this thing is entirely free, it's entirely open source, you can download it and run it on your own machine at home, I'm sure people are going to work it into comfy UI workflows and such as well, but if you're not technically inclined, they do in fact have a hugging face demo that is completely free for anyone to use. Of course, I'm going to link it down below, but here it is everybody. By the way, if you want to do a complete style, which we'll talk about later in the video, that is going to be called Photomaker style, but that's equally as cool as the Photomaker realistic human photos. Okay, anyways, you can see this example I uploaded one singular image of myself and I got these outputs with the prompt cinema screenshot image as Thanos Marvel cinema Thanos and yeah it essentially turned me into Thanos it is hilarious I mean check that out don't I make a great Thanos guys honestly they should have cast me in the original movies so yeah that's the other crazy part about this is actually works shockingly well with just one image upload previously if you wanted to do something like this that classic Google dream booth method you'd have to have at least like 10 photos of your subject, but nope, just one, you know, kind of eh image of me and you get some pretty insane outputs. They do say right here, one image is okay, but more is better. And I do have more images of myself. So we'll see if we can make this even better. Although we don't perform face detection, the faces in the uploaded image should occupy the majority of the image. In this specific demo on hugging face, the way to trigger your images is going to be with the word image or the short prefix, I should say, just IMG. So that's why the prompt is is cinema screenshot IMG as Thanos, Marvel Cinema Thanos. Of course, if you're running this at home on your own machine, you could customize it to be Matt Vid Pro, for example. All right, so now I've uploaded 10 random images of myself and we can try this out again. We'll see if we get better outputs for the same Thanos prompt first. By the way, they do have style templates. I should have honestly picked a Disney character for that, but yeah, they have low poly, comic book, neon punk, fantasy art, all this other stuff. And you'll also see they have your typical advanced options we have a negative prompt for stable diffusion, number of sample steps for stable diffusion, also style strength, which is going to be how strong your specific style is here, number of output images, guidance scale, etc. Let's see if 10 images versus one is going to give us a better Thanos Matvid Pro output. You can see the generation on the website is actually quite quick right now, at least. I'm sure after I post this video, it's going to slow down the website a little bit. Again, though, it's open source. Okay, this is <laughs> a little bit more realistic. <laughs> 
Okay, I think it looks a little bit less like Thanos and more like me, which makes sense because it has a lot more images of me. But yeah, this is like if I was actually Thanos, which is hilarious. Man, it is so freaking cool. We got to try some more prompts now. Let's try that classic use case where it's a professional headshot. Like, oh, I need something for my profile picture on LinkedIn. Professional headshot, studio portrait of image, suit and tie. And the template here, we are going to go for photographic which is the default one. And as expected, guys, honestly, some really great results here. I gotta say, these photos look a little bit less like me. They're a little bit off in some weird ways, but they they absolutely do resemble me. I bet I could change this to my profile picture and my family members would have no idea. They'd be like, when did you get professional headshots done? I don't understand. That works out really, really well, though, and it's instant and completely free. How awesome is that? Let's try some more fun stuff. Keynote IMG as Steve Jobs presenting latest iPhone. <laughs> Okay, yeah, I literally look like Steve Jobs. That is crazy. Yep, there I am presenting the latest iPhone, classic black turtleneck and all. It's like a weird, like, half-bred Matt Vidpro and Steve Jobs at the same time. It's so crazy. Okay, guys, let's try some different things other than just me. How does it do, let's say, with some images of my dog? This time, it's not a human, so I don't know if this is exactly going to work. I have a feeling, though, it would work with this Photomaker-style. As you can see, for stylization, you could use their other demo. We'll put the... Well, let's put my dog in a dog show. Why not? Okay, interesting, it sort of worked. Both of these dogs definitely resemble my dog, but it isn't exactly perfect. Let's go ahead and actually up the style strength because this might give us an edge over here. This might actually allow us to capture more of the qualities of my dog. Again, if this doesn't work at all, I definitely think that the stylizer might work because I do have a feeling that this one sort of lends itself best to human samples. Okay, very interesting. Somehow it made things a little bit worse. Okay, we were able to get a little bit closer by specifying the dog breed and removing the style. It looks like the style strength didn't really work that well with my dog as the subject. However, you could see the way that his face looks is definitely represented in these images quite well. You'll see that he has like a little white stripe that goes down the front of his face and that's definitely visible in both of these. So it is applying this dog to this dog essentially. Oh, silly me, by the way, the style strength is obviously for the style template. I thought it was going to be for the uploaded images. That's an oversight on my part. So yeah, obviously style strength is not going to increase the strength of your uploaded images. All right, I'm going to try the photos of my dog in the photo maker style later. Again, that's that separate radio demo, but for now, let's focus on human figures. All right, so for this test, I'm taking a famous character that's probably already in the Stable Diffusion data set, and I'm going to try to see if we can actually get even better results than we normally would be able to get out of Stable Diffusion. In this case, uh, turn Harry Potter into the Joker. <laughs> <laughs> All right, a pretty decent result right off the bat. Definitely more Joker than Harry Potter, but it definitely got like the facial features correct at least. And for reference here, guys, this is what regular Stable Diffusion XL gave us for that same exact image. And there we go. We got an even better result this time. As you can see, the magic of an instantly customizable model sometimes isn't enough to fully get the perfect image you want. You still have to have some talent or know-how. You still have to pro prompt it correctly. I'm not known to be the best prompter out there, but adding Harry Potter glasses definitely helps with our final image result. Now guys, I want to go ahead and try this thing out with a custom character. Let's generate a completely original, never before seen character, and then plop them in this. Here we are on Bing Image Creator. Let's do a new original character design. Young man who is the Lemon Ninja. He has lemon themed clothes, a lemon hat, and his main choice of defense are lemon smoke nades. Hyper realistic render. Okay, we definitely got some interesting characters here. All right, I like this one right off the bat. I think we're gonna go ahead and move forward with this. Very specific clothing, very specific character. Let's toss this into Photomaker now. IMG standing in a beautiful forest next to a river. For the template, I guess we'll go with digital art. Okay, so our images here definitely have a very similar looking character nonetheless. 
same face shape and everything, but he's just wearing different clothes. So interesting. I think if we want to have his entire style in here, we might have to use that other photo maker style demo, or we could try to actually prompt the clothes in here. So let's go ahead and try that. We're going to prompt the clothes in this time. All right. And you can see our results are a little bit better there. Again, still a very consistent face. It's definitely the same character in both of the images, which is what we like to see. Consistent clothing is going to be difficult to achieve at least with this photo maker one, but I don't know about the style one. We have to try that out. Still though, this is such a game changer for custom AI imagery. Let's go ahead and try the other Gradio demo, the photo maker style. So let's go ahead and upload those same exact images of my dog and see if we can get better outputs. Again, this still says human photos in it, but it was sort of working without human photos. So I want to see if the stylization works better. Hmm. So it looks like we may have run into a bit of an issue with this. As you can see, no GPU is currently available for you after 60 seconds. I think a lot of you are going to run into this issue when you try to run it on the Hugging Face spaces. There is a solution if you have a Hugging Face account, which you can, of course, make for free. You can actually duplicate these spaces up here. Now, I did attempt to do this, but it requires a Hugging Face token for the photo maker weights, and I'm not sure where you get this token from. Some of you that might be, you know, more inclined to GitHub and Hugging Face and all that might know exactly what this is and be like, oh, that's simple, but I have no idea where to get this token. So if someone could tell me down in the comments below, that would be amazing. Now, since this is open source, I'd also love to try it out with other models than just stable diffusion. It'd be really cool to try it with SD Turbo, for example, where we can generate really fast, instant results. Darn, I really wanted to know if we could get improved results on non-human models. But at the very least, this thing is entirely open source, which is pretty awesome. I feel like the output outputs for the stylization are a lot more diverse and thus it might work better for non-human subjects. Again, the local install doesn't look too difficult, so perhaps we could set up a tutorial later if you guys really want to see that full local install. Otherwise, guys, if you want to see even more examples, they do actually have a project page that go over the method, even showcasing demos with famous figures, of course, Obama as a spaceman, swimming in a pool, or he's at the beach. They even have Sam Altman, the CEO of OpenAI here, also as a spaceman with red hair or just a close-up of his face. Ooh, and this is a really unique idea. We could take an input image of someone who is long gone from the past and actually bring them back, creating realistic images of them, or even take paintings and turn them into realistic images of what that person who was painted might actually have looked like in real life. So many cool possibilities with custom models and AI. Oh, wow, changing age and gender? This is super cool. I wish uh, I, wish I checked out the project page in the beginning of the video, these examples are freaking awesome. This is pretty darn cool. Mixing two different identities together even, that's something I even thought of at first. Actually works pretty well. Wow, we have gradients for changing the identity. <laughs> That's just super crazy. Overall, though, this project is honestly super impressive. I'm really glad it exists because this is a great solution to the problem of custom characters inside of AI. And I do hope that they build off of this project and do something that's a little bit beyond just humanoid figures, because I feel like that would be pretty awesome. This is why open source is just awesome, though. It really brings power to the people when it comes to AI. Anyone can access this. Anyone can do custom AI characters now. And I'd love to see this implemented into something like Comfy. UI where everyone can use it a lot easier or possibly implemented in Pinocchio, which I haven't really talked about Pinocchio on this channel. I've been trying to do a video on it for quite some time. I've had some technical limitations though. Anyways, let me know what you think about this in the comments below. I think this is a huge step towards the future of custom AI art. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.